Come October 14th, he says he'll use whatever means necessary to clear over 700 people living here on this plot of land. A community is shaken to its core. Here at this home behind me, police have been going in and out all day. Questions are now mounting at this crime scene and police are giving no answers. Take a walk with me all throughout this park. Tree branches have already fallen and take special note this branch on your screen on the ground and there are still leaves on the branches. It brought out fire, police and SWAT all because of a hostage call that came in earlier this morning. The sun is coming up. The orchard looks amazing. It's so beautiful out here and we've made it to the barnyard playland. This is now the highest point at Lookout Pass. Signs are still up all over the airport telling people to mask up. We were the ones who actually told an employee about the change. Our weather got a little bit weird, but that's not turning people away. You can see long lines here at the food booths. Everyone I met today is just so happy. Pig out is back. So it's one thing to see these numbers and seeing inflation going up, but feeling it, that's a whole different thing. So I was out shopping this weekend, forgot my bag, so I had to buy a bag, and I was stuffing everything into it. One bag was $60, and that's when I think I really felt it, and I, I was just shocked. Yeah. When are some of the times you guys have been feeling it? We start with our Esther Bauer live in Moscow. Well, I'm here just off King Road where a community is shaken to its core. Here at this home behind me, police have been going in and out all day. Questions are now mounting at this crime scene and police are giving no answers. All of a sudden this happened. The unthinkable. Four students found dead on Sunday right next to the University of Idaho. Neighbors are still in shock, now taking new measures to protect themselves. Now carry a weapon on me. I used to do that before I moved up to Moscow. Moved to Moscow, thought it was super safe, stopped. And then this happened, and so at least if and until they find who did it, I'm going to continue carrying a weapon on me again. Police searched the area inside and outside 1122 Queen Road on Monday. Law enforcement is still looking for evidence and a suspect. Releasing little information has those in the area asking questions. Until we have the details of sort of what the caused the police to think it was a homicide, then a I'm still not entirely sure about it. Classes are canceled and a memorial is now growing at the university entrance. There's been smaller scale tragedies that have happened over the years since I've been here, but this is something completely different. Frank Chen also lives nearby, a recent U of I graduate with a new outlook on life through these tragic deaths. Like, make sure to just kind of live your life as much as you can because you never really know how much time like you have left. As days pass, the investigation is intensifying to find a killer with four students dead. And we keep hearing from viewers about why there are so few answers as of now on a cause of death and a possible suspect still on the loose. We asked police for that information and for an interview. As of now, we were not granted either of those. We'll continue to press for more answers and bring you the latest information as this tragedy unfolds. Live tonight with why the judge says he handed down that sentence, Esther. Well, the judge wants to get this right the first time. He says if his sentence was reversed, it would put the victims back in court to relive this trauma again. Judge Michael Price heard over 200 victim impact statements while deciding Sharp's final sentencing. He says numerous people told him time after time they wanted Sharp locked up forever. He's not allowed to make that call and wants victims to know why. If this court makes a mistake or commits an error in this sentencing, the appellate court and most likely the Washington State Supreme Court will reverse my ruling. That reversal would put victims back in the court to relive the trauma and Sharp would be resentenced. Washington Supreme Court has made clear kids tried as adults cannot face life in prison without the possibility of parole. Sharp has to have the chance to get out of prison. Still, Judge Price handed down a sentence double than what his defense asked for. 40 years behind bars for the school shooter who finally opened up about what he did and the pain he caused. Now that I'm here, I can see clear as anything that it's really only one thing I can say. And that's how I'm sorry. 
He apologized to the community he shattered and for ruining his family and to the mom whose son he murdered. Most of all, I am sorry to Amy and Emily for taking Sam from them. For I know these are just words, but I do mean them. Words that won't bring back Sam Strahan or take away the trauma they live with, but words he's taking with him as he prepares for nearly four decades in prison. And I pray for forgiveness as God himself does forgive me. And since this has gone on for so long, he's already served five years. This means he has 35 years left on his sentence and a lifetime of healing for those affected by this tragedy. Mr. What we learned is that a new shelter isn't going to fix this problem. Well, that's because of the 601 people living here. Only 51 of them said they would even go to a shelter. With that being said, they still don't feel safe here. Can you say hi, Lily? We lost hi, my apartment, me and my puppy. Jessica Chavez moved to the camp in June. It doesn't feel like home. It's scary as in like at night time there's fighting, um, there's people yelling during the day. There's just, it's just very scary. I'm not like used to it. But she says she still can't leave. What's keeping me is uh, my social security. We're trying to fix that. And, um, I guess I don't qualify. Barriers like this are what keep most people here. Jules Helping Hands oversees Camp Hope and asked people, why are you here and what would get you to leave? 99% of those living here say they need a new form of identification, ID that's needed to find a job or get housing, an ID that costs money to get. My backpack got stolen, I don't know, a month ago or so. So now I'm back to scratch get my ID again. Kaylee E. Palowitz has been homeless for three years, still unable to get on his feet. I don't have a disability. I don't have a job. You know, it's hard maintaining a job for me, even though I have good work ethic. Skills homeless advocates say those living here don't have. The reason they're still in the camp and their biggest obstacle for getting out is no life skills. So they're stuck. 601 of them, each with a story as unique as Jessica's, in a community that's growing bigger by the day. I would like to get, um, get housing and get my own place. Um, that's keeping me out of here, yeah. And 77% of people here say what got them here were family struggles followed by a loss of income. So where will these people go if this camp is ever cleared? 100% of those surveys say they would move into tiny homes. It's something the city or county doesn't offer.